we're here to talk about my favorite topic, which is testing. Uh, I'm currently at Slack, uh, this little company just down the street here. Uh, Uber is like one of the few companies in the Bay Area that doesn't use Slack. Uh, <laughs> I, I had we, to give you crap for that, come on. We, we tried and you I know, I know. Load. I, 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 yeah. I just had to place it in there somewhere, come on. Um, but yeah, prior to that, I was at Google um, for five years, uh, and I dealt with a lot of different testing challenges. Uh, eventually, I ended up on a team with a very pretentious name called Mobile Ninjas uh, that worked on tools for Android developers and also in some internal infrastructure that helped us scale testing. Uh, I kind of biased, but I think Google has really figured out a lot of things. Uh, unfortunately, they're not all external. Uh, and so I'm here to sort of talk about what exists out there and uh, maybe how we can build things uh, outside of Google or just pray that Google releases it eventually. Uh, but, you know, to start out with a little bit of uh, history also, when I got to Slack, one of my first starter projects to Slack was actually uh, to write a sample espresso test. Uh, and I went out and I did that. I wrote like some documentation around it and, and I somehow convinced our Android engineering team to write UI tests. And so they went off and they wrote a bunch of UI tests. We have like more than a hundred now. Uh, and unfortunately we have no way to run them uh, because I think that uh, CI specifically for Android UI tests externally, it's a very sad story. Kind of looks like this. Um, this picture, I don't know, Apple, if you have seen this, because uh, I took this picture back in 2011 when I was working at Google on the Google Wallet project. Uh, and this was our first attempt at CI and Android. And actually, it was working reasonably well until the Velcro on these phones uh, melted because of the heat. Uh, and then everything just collapsed and the CI, you know, was, was broken. And uh, this was 2011, so one would figure that would be in a much better position uh, in 2016. Uh, but I recently did a little poll um, on this. There's a Slack community out there called Android Study Group, uh, where the best Android developers are. Uh, but I did this poll there, um, and uh, I was asking people, how do you do continuous integration, specifically on UI? Uh, and as you can see, the most popular answers are like one, two, and three. Uh, so basically some machine under somebody's desk with a bunch of phones or emulators hooked up to it. So it doesn't look very much different from uh, where we were five years ago. But within Google, as I mentioned, uh, things are uh, pretty cool. Uh, so back in the end of 2011, beginning of 2012, a bunch of engineers got together and we decided, you know, there's got to be a better way to do CI than a bunch of phones hooked up to a machine. Uh, and do it at Google scale. Uh, and so we ended up, you know, over a few quarters actually um, m making some infrastructure that scales to run like 100 tests per second. I'm sure right now it's a much bigger number. And we even went out and we presented on it. Uh, GTEC 2014, we gave this talk going green. Uh, it was a lot of theater, um, but also some technical information. Uh, and unfortunately, like, I thought that this was a really great talk. I don't know, I was part of it, so maybe I'm biased. But uh, it didn't get a lot of attention somehow. Uh, we were kind of hoping that uh, the community would look at what we built internally and maybe go out and build some of the similar things externally. Uh, but really what everybody wanted was just to, like give us all of this now. Um, and as many of you know, probably open sourcing projects, unless you work at Square, is not a big priority for companies. So. I, I mean, Square is amazing for open source. I've got to give them props for that. So my talk today uh, is going to be a little bit of recap. Uh, I want to bring this back, you know, to the center of attention. Uh, you know, how do we build a stable uh, mobile, but really kind of Android test environment? Uh, and um, yeah, so, and kind of how does that relate to what we have out there right now? And uh, what can we do to make things better? So uh, really, if you're interested in this topic, you should go also and watch this talk. It's quite entertaining. So uh, my talk has, you know, ideal uh, in the title. So what does an ideal CI actually look like? Uh, and, you know, just a quick reminder, why do we do continuous integration? We do continuous integration uh, because we uh, want to have confidence that our code is actually 
you know, it builds, compiles, it runs, and maybe even that it's functional. Uh, and so all of these things are great, right? We, we get great signal out of our CI uh, tool chain. And in order to sort of have good signal, we need all of these properties here. I, I've highlighted just, a, just kind of a couple. I think these are the really critical ones. The other ones are sort of important for some companies and may not be as important for others. Reliability is like a given. If your CI system introduces infrastructure uh, failures, your, um, you know, your developers' trust uh, in tests in general just goes down the drain and uh, they just stop paying attention. And CI, that's you know, basically the, the point is lost. Scalability, um, we all either work at companies that are already huge or hope to become huge. So things need to be able to scale. Uh, performance, uh, maybe, maybe not as important for CI because it's not really interactive. Uh, so maybe you can wait like 10 minutes longer for your CI build to complete, uh, but the faster things are, the better. Controllable, uh, this is kind of a, sometimes an overlooked point. Uh, we want our CI system to be test friendly, as in like we want it to be controllable so we can control it from our tests. Like for example, on Android, you may want to toggle airplane mode in your test scenario. And we want our CI system to enable that. And finally, debuggable, this is a huge one for me. We run tests because we hope that they actually fail sometimes. And when they do fail, we hope that either we can reproduce the failure locally or that we have enough debug information from our CI system to actually be able to diagnose the failure. So these are the characteristics of an ideal uh, setup. And that pretty much applies to you know, mobile or not mobile. Uh, but on mobile, we specifically, we have more challenges. Um, I'm sure you, know, you all know about these because you're here. Uh, but we have different screen resolutions. We have different OS versions. On Android, we have a gazillion different phones. So basically, our testing matrix just becomes huge. By the way, I pulled this picture from the developer console today, and you can see that Froyo is still around. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure on iOS things look a little bit better, but uh, still, we, we do have a huge testing matrix, and we have to cover a lot of bases uh, when we test on mobile. So, uh, to shift gears a little bit, um, I talked a little bit of you know, gen generalities. Now we're going to talk specifically about Android. Uh, on Android, of course, you can do uh, unit testing. It's wonderful. Android doesn't make it simple uh, for you to really do unit testing. Uh, so eventually, I think, unless you want to kind of go through pain of working with RoboElectric, uh, you're going to end up writing instrumentation tests, hopefully espresso tests. Uh, and instrumentation uh, is a wonderful thing, but it does require an Android runtime uh, to execute in. So essentially, that means either a device or an emulator. And uh, the way we invoke instrumentation is this ADB shell AAM instrument command, and you pass it some, some kind of a test package, and then it kind of scans you know, that APK and runs all the tests there. So the basic, build, basic building blocks uh, of a CI system, you know, I've broken these down into three things. Uh, you have some kind of an orchestration, something that actually makes you know, your tests run. Uh, and this lives on your host machine, so some kind of a build node, you know, if you're using Jenkins or whatever CI system that you're using. Uh, then you have a device or an emulator. And when I say device, you know, it can be the physical device or a virtual device. And then you have this wonderful thing on Android called ADB, uh, the Android debug bridge, um, and that sort of allows you to pipe da data back and forth and commands back and forth, and it enables your orchestration to actually run things and grab things from the device. So let's look at all of these building blocks and kind of the characteristics that we must have uh, in order to have an ideal CI system. Orchestration. So here are the basic things that orchestration needs to do. It needs to obtain uh, and then maybe release a device for testing if you have multiple devices connected. Uh, it needs to set up your device for testing. So at the very basic level, it needs to install your apps uh, your test APK and your app under test. And then here's one very important thing. Uh, we've, we've kind of really uh, gathered uh, over the years at Google that it's super important that your orchestration actually runs each instrumentation test in a separate, separate instrumentation call. Uh, this will actually make things a lot more stable. This will also ensure that um, if one of your tests, let's say, catches 
a crash in your application that the subsequent test will actually run. Something that Gradle doesn't do. And then of course, orchestration uh, should collect debug info uh, and it should make, you know, collect as much debug info uh, as possible. And then hopefully you have some nice UI to present it all to your developers. And our debug bridge. Uh, if you go back and watch that presentation, I think the best part of that presentation is about the Android debug bridge. Um, and uh, it goes into like a lot of technical detail on why ADB really sucks. Uh, but here's what it does. Uh, it issues shell commands uh, in testing. Uh, it installs APKs. It pushes some bits to the device and it grabs some bits from the device. It's really kind of like all it needs to do. Uh, but, uh, and it, you know, the most important thing is that it needs to do it reliably and quickly. Uh, because if you go back to the previous slide, we're now issuing ADB calls for each test. You may have like thousands of tests. That's a lot of ADB calls and you kind of want all of them to succeed. You don't want any of them to hang. And then the device. Uh, so one cool thing about Android uh, is that Android has uh, this very wonderful tool called the emulator, uh, which I think a lot of developers didn't believe in until recently. Um, but the emulator uh, is actually an Android device and it runs all of the layers that you see there except the Linux kernel. Uh, so I think it's really cool because it actually you're, you're kind of like you have a very realistic environment. But in CI, um, sort of you want a few more things from your device. You want your device to start reliably and quickly, the emulator specifically, or you, know, you want to be able to connect to it quickly. Uh, you want uh, your tests to execute in an environment that's kind of as fast as the top of the line physical phone. Uh, you want your device to sort of be scalable, as in, you know, are you going to go and plug in like 100,000 phones into a machine? Or you, maybe you can start up a bunch of emulators and data centers. You want your device to provide tests with control over system settings. So um, we talked uh, in that presentation that I referred to. Uh, about sort of a special service APK that is installed on the emulator uh, that actually gives you control over certain system settings and allows you to take screenshots and whatnot. And then one more thing with UI testing specifically, if you've ever run a bunch of UI tests continuously, uh, once in a while Android just decides to like throw up a system pop-up because something is not responding. Uh, and that will just break all of your UI tests um, and it's terrible. So you want something that auto dismisses these pop-ups. And we talk about that in that presentation. Uh, there, is, there is a way to do that actually. It's quite, uh, quite hacky, but it works. So now uh, we know kind of how an ideal CI setup looks like. Uh, so now let's shift gears and talk about uh, kind of how, what is the vanilla setup and how does it measure up? So when I, what I mean by vanilla setup is if you, know, you wrote your first, uh, UI test on Android and you went to run it, probably do it from uh, Android Studio and this is kind of what you'd be using. So you'll have, you know, in CI, you'll be using some kind of a CI system like Jenkins, for example, uh, or another equivalent. And eventually Jenkins will issue this uh, Gradle W connect check command. And under the hood, that's going to run your ADB shell AM instrument. So you'll most likely be using stock ADB unless you've gone ahead and rewritten ADB like Google did. I really hope that somebody did also other than Google. I don't know. I feel like Square should have done it already. Um, and uh, then you'll want, um, you'll be running on either a locally connected device, uh, physical device or an emulator. So what are the problems with the vanilla set setup? If you look at orchestration, uh, as I mentioned, it's very important that we run tests in single, in, uh, single instrumentations, separate instrumentations, sorry. But uh, Gradle W connected check runs all of it in uh, one process, one sweeping process. So if, if you've ever had this experience, like one of your tests fails and the subsequent tests don't run, it really sucks. There's also no sharding, like you can't shard your tests out across multiple devices with Gradle W. Um, and there's also the debug info is quite limited. Uh, like you get one big logcat, but if you have thousand tests, logcat is actually a circular buffer. So you may not even have, have all the debug information. Um, and so, yeah, vanilla orchestration, not so good. Uh, ADB uh, is slow and flaky. Uh, if you want more details, go ahead and watch that talk. Uh, but basically if you've ever written 
scripts around ADB, you pretty much know that you have to retry everything like three times and hope it works. And device, uh, I think that actually the, the stock emulator has improved significantly in the past year or so. Uh, but I think it's still not test friendly. There are no like test friendly system images. Uh, physical devices also have problems. Uh, they're just not designed for CI usage. They're not built for that. Uh, they're hard to maintain and they're hard to scale. Emulator, uh, it's, it's actually a good tool, but it's hard to configure it properly. Uh, and for the emulator, the Android team doesn't really care about it that much. Uh, so they maintain like some of the newer system images, but not really all of them. So once in a while, you find really weird bugs where like something is not, uh, is not right on the system image. And then the fast version, this is like the x86 version that runs on KVM enabled machines. Uh, uh, basically, it can't run on services like AWS. So this is the problem we ran to, into at Slack. We run our build nodes on AWS. And AWS does not give you access to sort of the raw hardware underneath the hood. So not so ideal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, contrast that with what Google has internally. Basically, like at Google uh, went ahead and re-implemented orchestration. Uh, there's ADB Turbo, which I already mentioned. Google does use the stock x86 emulator for running, uh, but they do it in dedicated data center machines that are KVM enabled. Uh, things are properly configured and maintained because they're wrapped, uh, kind of abstracted away by a script that simply starts the emulator correctly every single time. And then it does include these services uh, that I mentioned um, uh, on the system images. So what do we do? Uh, you know, one of the things we can do is hope that Google will release this externally. I know that they have talked about it quite a lot, uh, but they haven't done it yet. It's not a priority. Uh, then there's like a lot of services. One would figure that people will go ahead and build something that actually works really well. Um, and um, I've tested out uh, at least the top one, and it falls short. Uh, so Firebase, you now everything is called Firebase at Google, but uh, runs all your tests in one instrumentation, still a problem. They do have virtual devices, uh, which is pretty cool, but they're very slow, for some reason much slower than physical devices. And debuggability like, is terrible. You get one big log cap for your, all your tests. There's a video feature, but it's, again, one big video for all tests, not good. Xamarin and AWS suffer from problems too. So, so uh, I'm kind of quickly running out of time, but uh, I, I think that there's definitely an opportunity to build uh, tools around this. Uh, and I think we can just do it incrementally um, in, in kind of small steps. For orchestration, uh, we need to write some tools that actually discover what test you have in an APK based on text dump. Um, and we need uh, some kind of a simple alternative to Gradle W um, that will just basically test, take your two tests, uh, take your two APKs and run the tests. We, maybe not all companies will need this. I think ADB actually does a reasonably okay job, uh, but eventually you'll probably run into problems with it and you'll need to have something better. And you know, for the device, um, I think that there's actually a lot of interesting activity going on in this field right now, like Jenny Motion, the people that kind of put Google to shame with the emulator. Um, they are, they've announced uh, Jenny Motion Cloud, and you know, if they just give you an ADB connection to their, their like properly configured emulators, I think that's actually very interesting. Um, then there's this other really cool thing, uh, which has been explored at Google, it's called User Mode Linux. Um, and it's something that allows you to like run a Linux instance within Linux, and you can actually use this for Android. Uh, and uh, it does not require virtualization in data centers. So, can actually work on AWS and other services. So uh, if you're kind of interested in any of these topics, I'm also really curious to hear you know, people's thoughts on them uh, and what other people are doing. So come talk to me after the talk. Thank you. <laughs>